Hey guys, in this video I will show you how to take your productivity in Excel to the next level by integrating ChatGPT. By the end of this tutorial you will have a new button ready to generate Excel formulas, VBA code or like in my example a travel plan. To use it, simply select the cell with your prompt, click this button and ChatGPT will generate a response that will appear in a new worksheet. I will be also sharing some practical use cases for this tool and I will guide you through the process of adding this button to your Excel files. So get ready to boost your Excel workflows with ChatGPT. Before we begin, a short disclaimer. This video is heavily inspired by Layla's video. She wrote an office script to bring ChatGPT into Excel and I thought to myself, hey, I can do that too, but with VBA. So that is the reason I created this video. If you're interested in the office script solution, then definitely check out her video. I will leave the link to the video in the description below. And with that out of the way, let us begin with the first example. As an Excel nerd, I even use spreadsheets to plan my vacations. With the help of ChatGPT, I can now speed up the vacation planning process. In this example, I asked ChatGPT to create an itinerary for a day trip to Barcelona. After clicking the button, you will see in the status bar that the request is being processed. Once completed, a message box will appear and a new worksheet will be inserted. On the result sheet, you will now find your itinerary for the day trip. Next up, I'm going to generate some sample data, which I will use in the next example. For this purpose, I want to create some fictional employee IDs that have a particular format. Once again, when I click the button, the output will appear on the result sheet. As I said, we will use this data in the next example. So let me create a new sheet and paste the data here. Suppose you want to clean up the data and extract only the numbers from the ID, but you are unsure which Excel formula to use. You can now turn to ChatGPT for help. I provided an example for the format and asked for an Excel formula to extract the numbers. After clicking the button, the formula will appear on the result sheet. Let me copy this cell and paste it next to the ID. I only need to update the cell reference, so instead of B1, the data is located in A3. Once that is done, I can simply drag the formula down and now I have the cleaned ID. Instead of Excel formulas, you can even create entire VBA codes. For this example, I want to split each worksheet in the current workbook into separate Excel files and save them on my desktop. When I click the button, I receive the VBA code in the result sheet. All I have to do now is to run the code. So let me copy the code go to the Developer tab and open the Visual Basic Editor. In the new module, I will paste the code. Just by looking at this, I can already see that VBA won't accept the double backslashes. This could be because the API response from OpenAI is in JSON and I might need to implement an additional cleaning step. Nonetheless, I will try to execute it. As I said, this code currently leads to an error, but to fix it, all you need to do is to adjust the file path. Now, when I rerun it, the worksheets will be saved as separate workbooks on my desktop. To validate it, let me open up one spreadsheet. Here we have our employee data. Now, the cool thing is that the ChatGPT functionality is available in all my workbooks. It doesn't need to be a macro-enabled workbook. Let me show you what I mean. You can pick any cell you want. For example, I will ask ChatGPT for a joke. Next, all I need to do is select the cell and then click the smiley emoji up here. Once done, a new results worksheet will appear and I can find the joke there. By the way, if you select an empty cell and try to run it, you will get the following error message. Now that you have seen how it works, let me show you how to add this functionality to Excel. All you need is an OpenAI API key. Go to the following website. You will find the link in the description below. Next, create a free account. No credit card is required. When signing up and creating an API key, OpenAI will grant you $18 in free credit that can be used during your first three months. After that, you will need to pay to use their service. And with that in mind, log into your account and in the upper right corner, click on Personal and select View API Keys. On this page, click on Create New Secret Key. Now it is important that you do not expose this API key. Just for the sake of this video, I will show you my API key. 
However, at the time when you are watching this video, the key will no longer be valid. With that said, let me copy this API key and put it temporarily in my browser. We will come back to this API key in just a moment. Next, open your new Excel workbook and then click on Developer. If you do not see the Developer tab, right click on your ribbon and select Customize Ribbon. Ensure that you tick the box next to Developer and confirm your selection by clicking OK. With that in place, I can now click on Record Macro. It is important that you select Personal Macro Workbook in the drop down field here. The name and description do not matter. Next, click on OK. Right after that, you can stop the recording by hitting this button. Now open up the Visual Basic Editor. If everything went well, you should now see a new section called Personal.xlsb. Open this section and navigate to Module and open Module 1. In this module, we will paste the VBA code I uploaded to GitHub. You will find the link to the GitHub repo in the description of the video. If you click on it, you will see this site. All you need to do is to click on the copy icon up here. Then navigate back to the Visual Basic Editor, select all existing code and replace it with the code you just copied. On the very top of this script, you will find a section where you need to input your API key. So in my case, I pasted the API key into my browser. Let me go back, grab the API key and paste it here. Next, I just need to assign this macro to the Quick Access Toolbar. Therefore, in Excel, click on the arrow key in the top left corner and select More Commands. In the new window, select Macros and add the macro from the Personal Workbook to your Quick Access Toolbar. Optionally, you can also modify the button icon. Once done, click on OK. When you close the workbook, you will get a message asking you to save the changes to the personal workbook. It is important to click on Save to make the VBA code available in all your Excel files. To test it, let me open a new spreadsheet. I can now simply enter my prompt in any cell, select that cell and run the VBA code from the Quick Access Toolbar. The response from ChatGPT will appear in a new worksheet. And if you want to create a workbook similar to the one I showed you in the beginning, you can also execute the macro by clicking a button. To do this, draw a shape on your sheet, right click on the shape, select Assign Macro, choose Personal.xlsb from the drop down menu, and select the OpenAI completion macro. And for those who are interested in how this works, let me briefly explain the VBA code. Essentially, it sends an HTTP request to the OpenAI API. You can also adjust the API endpoint parameters, which are detailed in the OpenAI documentation. In the code, I first check if you have inserted your API key. If so, it checks if the current cell is not empty. If it's not empty, the VBA code creates a result worksheet if it doesn't already exist. To inform the user that the code is running and the status bar is updated before the HTTP request to the OpenAI API is created. After sending the request, the code checks the status code. A status code of 200 means that the request was successful. As I mentioned before, the response is in JSON format. So I'm cleaning up the response text and inserting each line in a separate row. Once this is completed, the new sheet is activated and the user is informed via a message box. If the status code is not 200, the user is notified via a different message box. In case of any error, the error number, description and line number are displayed in yet another message box. In addition to the main subroutine, there are helper functions used to check if the output worksheet already exists, pass the JSON response, clean up the input prompt from the cell, and remove unwanted backslashes in the response from ChatGPT. Okay guys, that is pretty much all the code. I hope you found this solution helpful. If you did, please let me know by hitting the like button. And as always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.